So you're getting, hey, how's it going? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Good. Such, such a pleasure to speak with you and to speak with you about Titans. Um, so tell me about this season. You know, you were, you were away for a little bit. And then I, I got to see your episode um, where you returned in episode nine. And it just felt like, you know, you were almost like a new person, like a new character. You know, you have more control over your powers. You just feel really mature. You feel like you've really, I feel like you've really grown into the character of Raven. So what do you like most about playing this newer version? Thank you so much. I, I think that what I really like about playing this new version is um, the, the I, she's not a victim anymore which I think is really important for a superhero show. You know, you had the first seasons, she's kind of this victim to her, to herself and to her powers and to, you know, the demon within her. And we see her in season three and she's no longer a slave to that. And she's kind of coming into her own, she's owning herself. And I think that's the end of the journey for so many, you know, young people and people of all ages really finding themselves and, learning to accept who they are and find independence. So I think that it's just really satisfying to let that journey, you know, uh, run its course. And you just seem a lot more mature, a lot taller. I don't know, yeah. it's, it's, it's like a real re-immersion. What have you liked about growing with the character? <laughs> I love growing. I think that, uh, it's one of the greatest parts of life at the moment for me. I'm growing so quickly at the moment. Uh, so much is changing, but I don't know. I thought that because this season, it's been a larger gap between season two and season three than season one and season two. And then particularly for me, because I came in kind of later in the season, I've had a lot of chance to grow and change. And I think that one of my favourite parts about that is seeing people's reactions and people kind of, double taking me like oh hi like last time I saw you you were like 13 and like way shorter and now you're like my height and we can have a normal conversation which is really fun I mean I think that you know having conversations with my castmates as more of an equal as opposed to like you know a mentor situation has been really fun like actually cultivating those friendships and joking and laughing and yeah but sorry Yes. <laughs> what was it like first sort of, you know, booking the role, getting into it? You know, you were 13, even 12, maybe 13 when you started. I was how 12 you, the role. How do you even approach the character at the beginning? How do you get into that headspace? Well, I was a pretty freaky child getting into that headspace with such ease. <laughs> but um, I think, oh, let me think. It was so long ago. <laughs> Uh, what well, was a self tape? I filmed because I was living in Chicago at the time, so I taped it with my mom, and we kind of, we kind of just took the scene at face value. I did all of the research, by the way. I did all of the comic book research and watched mm. the, watched the cartoons. Um, mainly the Teen Titans. Didn't watch too much Teen Titans Go because the fans mm. don't like a Teen Titans Go very much. Mm. Uh, and for what that for what the character was at the time, you know, she was this young girl, she was very vulnerable, she was very scared. And so I used, I used a lot of that in that character and was able to tap into that. And then the next season, she got all angsty, which was great. I mean, Greg, the showrunner, mainly wrote this character to fit my, how I was kind of growing at the time. It's, mm -hmm. There's nothing better than an actual teenage girl to be able to write realistic teenage girls you know mm. like at all of the stages I feel like it's been three main stages of my life and all of them have been pretty accurate to my own personal growth yeah that says a lot too so you had the experience like you did the research you, you knew yeah. about titans you know everything but before that did you have a real interest in comics did you have a real interest in superheroes well, oh, don't tell anyone this, but I I always kind of kept a lookout for Marvel characters I could be because um, mm. I had a Marvel superhero encyclopedia. But after getting this audition and like, like I just, I was like, oh my God, 
this is awesome. This is kind of like the dream to be a superhero, to play a superhero. And I'd never read the comics before, but this made me get into the comics and it made me really love the comics. Like, I don't know if you've ever read a Teen Titans comic, but they're actually really good. And I had a real, I had a lot of fun kind of getting into that and becoming that person. Like I have these, you know, they've got volumes of all the comics and we've got like, well, a stack like this big, we've got like 15 of them, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. I really like what you've, you've done with it on the show. I like, you know, I like your show. I like Doom Patrol. I like the universe that you're building as well too. And I like how connected it is. I like that it started yeah. off on yours. So again, sort of what was it like at that, at that beginning time, you know, what did you feel like, what was it about Raven in particular that you just felt like it was sort of your character to play? I think that um, everybody when they're younger is kind of scared when they're growing up and they everyone thinks that they're bigger than they are and they can, you know, do all of these things and go off with adults and be a superhero even when they're 13. And I, when I was 13, I thought I, I thought I was massive, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm on this adult show. I'm with, I'm hanging, I'm kicking it with the big kids, you know? And, you know, I still feel that. And I know that in two years, I'm going to look back and I'm going to be like, oh my God, I was so young and naive and such. And I think that having that ability to like look back and, and kind of that self-awareness that it takes to say, look, I, I think that I'm big and I think that I can do anything, but I also know that I'm scared and I know that it's hard. You know, I know that I'm not actually big. I think that that's a real unique perspective that Raven has, that Rachel has, knowing that she doesn't, I mean, not knowing anything about herself mm -hmm. and yet still trying to go off and do things. I think that... I relate to that a lot. I relate to that a lot. I think a lot of people can relate to that a lot, but, you know, in a lot of ways, just having that mirrored experience made me feel really connected to Rachel. Hmm. Great answer. Um, so what was your absolute favorite moment of filming? Ever? Yeah. Oh, that's hard. Um, Oh, goodness. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Oh, I think that my favourite moment was season one, like episode four, when everyone came together and I, like episode four together and stuff. And honestly, because I read the comics and I was like the, the most excited one on set that day when we had that first scene mm -hmm. with the Titan all together. I was so excited. And I'd also spent time with each of the cast members individually, um, Brenton, Ryan and Anna individually for their mm -hmm. own like individual storylines. And so I was just so happy when we could all come together and all of my friends were together and we were the Titans, you know? I think that was, I don't know, I think that was just a really like goosebumps moment for me and I was just really excited to be there. So what did you like most about, we had had the chance to talk with Brenton for, I think it was for Pirates, um, but just seems like a really genuine, decent person. What do you like best about working with him? What do you like sort of about working with this cast when, you know, you're not always sort of, the Titans are a little fractured. You're not always getting, gonna get along. You're, you've, you've all got sort of your own things that you're dealing with. But what's it like to work with them? What's it like to sort of to build your characters together that way? It's really special. I mean, Brenton being a fellow Aussie mm -hmm. uh, and having that journey in season one, we really bonded then. He was away from his family and I also, you know, was away from my family for the first time. They came up every now and then though, so I was lucky. But I got to really bond with him and he's a really funny guy and he's really... He's just a great person. I love him. And um, same with Ryan. Ryan became, I mean, thinking about it now, because I've kind of moved around quite a bit in the last five years, but Ryan has been my, my longest friend at the moment. My most, I see him every year and we get along every year. And so like he's become one of my, 
close friends over the years. And then Anna's just so lovely. Like you just, she's, she's always happy and she's always like supportive. If you're doing something, she's so excited for you. It's great. And then we've got these new Titans always coming and going, always coming and going. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of one of the greatest parts about this show is like, I'm always making these new friends and they're always great. It's amazing. Like Chella and Chelsea were last season and they were just the most lovely people ever. And then this season we got um, Blackfire and Tim Drake. I got to interact. And, and of course, um, God, how could I forget Josh Orban who plays Superboy, who mm. I've become very close. He's like a big brother to me um, since last season. And then, God, I'm just going on about everyone individually. I just really like everyone. But um, I'm excited. I'm really excited to work with uh, Jay Lycurgo, who's playing Tim Drake. Um, mm. Maybe next season. <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll see. But um, it's everyone, like, they just, something about them casting directors know how to cast lovely people, which mm -hmm. is a win. Yeah. Uh, what do you like most about shooting in Toronto? Other than, you know, in, in the winter months, perhaps. Uh, <laughs> other than the winter, what do you like best about shooting the show in Toronto? Well, I love Toronto in the summer. I think it's like, I think that the great thing about Toronto is that you kind of can do anything. You can be anyone, right? That sounds so cheesy, but you can be sort of anyone when you're in the city and like outside the city. And I mean, not that sounded dumb. Uh, you can be like, because I lived in the city and I also mean outside the city, but I lived in the city. But the first season, we were kind of this family unit. We set up at, like near Jane Station in Blue West Village. Mm. And we had this gorgeous little family. Like we loved it there. And then the next season, we moved into the city. And my roommate at the time was a house dancer. And we went to all these dance battles in the same sort of areas. And I, I had the greatest time then too. And then this season uh because of lockdown it sucked but mm. it was still a beautiful place to be you could still go on walks all of the parks are gorgeous I don't know I just love the city I think it's a real I think it's a young people city I think you know like you can there's so many places to go there's so much stuff to do I think it's like if you've got your day off Toronto is the place to be yeah so let's talk about this season because it was so great to see your sort of return your comeback episode but I want, you know, I watched the whole thing. I watched the entire season. And I think tonight is actually the finale, the final episode. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, not at risk to spoil too much, but what is something that you're excited for people to see? What were you excited for people to see this season and into this last episode? I'm excited for people to see um, how Crane is dealt with because he's done some pretty terrible things. Mm -hmm. I think he's got to come to his just rewards. And I think maybe, may or may not, Rachel might have a little idea as to how to make sure he gets what he deserves. And that's mm. my favorite part of the entire season. I haven't been yeah. able to say anything because it's like may or may not be the final scene, mm -hmm. but it's really good. And I'm excited yeah. for people to see it. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe look to the clues that have been given throughout. Maybe even episode titles might have a little hint of as to yeah. what's going on. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you do tell a story really well, though. I mean, the, the way that it builds up throughout the season, just to see everything that's been happening, to see your comeback in particular. I really, really enjoyed that. I think this season's been fantastic. Like, I'm reading the scripts this season was so much fun I had the greatest time so we get to see a little bit about your powers on screen you know and I like the way too I I, I didn't quite say it myself but you know Rachel Raven that you see a distinction between them between the two characters or um, the sort of versions of the character but it's really cool seeing you sort of grow into your power or you know reclaim your power what about off screen? What do you think of when you think of yourself as maybe having a superpower? What do you think your own superpower would be? Hmm. I think, okay, this is a bit, oh, that's a really good question. I think my superpower is Uh, when I get interested in something, I 
I I can't stop kind of looking into it and get you know researching it and I don't know finding finding out more I like I really like learning I really enjoy it's so cheesy to say but I really like learning and uh, I think over the years I've been able to harness that power and use it for good and um, find things that I'm interested in that are also constructive and not just like I don't know fandoms or more Teen Titans I got really into Teen Titans and I researched them a lot at one point and like Mm -hmm. But it's these days I'm I'm getting really I'm trying to get interested in my school subjects. <laughs> Not about them. But I think my superpower would be I'm always interested and I'm always I'm always up for like a discussion or a think or a, you know, a philosophize. Mm. I really enjoy that. And I've been able to do it more and more the more people I meet. Nice. So how does it work? Do you just does something just kind of come into your head and you're like, this is what I want to research or Give you something yeah, to do it. something, and I'll be like, "Oh, that sounds. I wonder why that is." And like a, a billion questions will pop up in my mind, and I'll be like, "I need to find out. I need to find out." And then I create all these theories, and you know, it's all stuff people have thought of before. But hopefully, one day I'll start thinking of stuff people haven't thought of before, mm. and maybe we'll get a, a Croft's law in the yeah. physics. Thing. That's the dream. The current I'm- dream is to have like a mathematics law named after me. Oh, wow. I think it's so incredible that you like to learn, that you like to uh, research, that you like to get into things. Thank you. A nice segue as well, too, because I got to talk to you about true spirit, because you can't, I don't, I don't imagine that, you know, sailing the way that you're doing is something that can just come naturally, that you don't just know it right away. You probably had to do a lot of practice, research, training. So I want to hear everything. Tell me everything about it. I had the most amazing sailing coach in the world, I reckon. Her name was Danielle. She was also my sailing double. And um, basically a couple of weeks leading up to filming, I was in the Gold Coast because of COVID. I couldn't come back to Sydney. So I went to the Gold Coast where we shot it. And um, we had a couple of weeks to prep. And I knew zilch about sailing. I knew absolutely nothing, mm. no idea. And um so the first day we went up, I learned how to raise the sails. I learned the kind of general idea of what sailing is. And um, from then we just kind of kept building and it did kind of, the thing about sailing is once you kind of understand what you're trying to do, you it, it does kind of come pretty naturally. You know, it can come naturally. Uh, my t- coach said it came naturally to me, but I don't know whether I believe her. I think she was just no. trying to you know up my confidence but I had a I had had a surprisingly fun time sailing like I didn't think I'd like it very much to be honest but Mm -hmm. I did there's something really satisfying about you know adjusting your sail and then suddenly the whole boat starts tipping over and you start going really fast and you're like yes I did it I caught the wind we are sailing fast you know Mm -hmm. so what is the difference between playing you know obviously a superhero to playing a real person, a real person who's there, right? On set, your advisor yeah. is involved in the project on a, an Australian as well, just like you. Yeah, it was really, it was really different kind of because with Rachel, because I was the first person to play her on screen, there are so many renditions of Raven, you know, throughout the DC universe that I was kind of free to, you know, take from different elements and try and create character that changed so much. Whereas this character, it's just a movie, you know, she doesn't change heaps and um, she's a real person. She's like right there. And it was, it was different, but I had a lot of fun with it, exploring the bits that were similar between Jess and I, you know, when we had dinner and we talked and I talked with the director who's been friends with Jessica for a long time. And so we were kind of able to find the similarities because Jess went off for seven months you know, sailing on her own. I had just come from Titans and because of lockdown, I hadn't seen my family. It was just me and my mum. Mm-hmm. And then filming True Spirit, my mum wasn't there either. So it was me and my roommate who was, you know, 18. It was just the two of us kind of trying our best. <laughs> Lots of mac and cheese was eaten. Mm-hmm. Uh, Good choice. I know, it was really yummy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that kind of feeling of, you know, doing this thing and 
you're following your dreams and whatnot, but it's hard, particularly when you, you don't have the support of your family and your friends at home, you know? And so I was able to really tap into that and then learning to sail and learning how to navigate and staff was, I was able to, you know, really connect with Jess in that aspect too, because I really like maths and there's a lot of maths in navigation. Mm. So that was one of my favorite things to shoot is when, you know, when we're navigating and doing the, like the sailing bits in the sailing, that's not sailing, which is um, charting her course. And I was able to connect with those more um, like straightforward, logical, logical elements of Jessica too. So mm. I think that was a great challenge, but I had a really good time. Yeah. Well, I could see that you're really motivated by your mind, but what about the physical aspect? I mean, is this something where you're just looking for very physical roles to play? Have you been attracted to those? Uh, not necessarily. I think that um, it's kind of been a coincidence almost that interesting fun roles for young women often have a physical element to it. And mm -hmm. action these days is such a popular genre in film because of you know its accessibility to a lot of demographics. And I think that that is just the way of the industry at the moment. There's a lot of physical roles. And I, I'd actually would be interested in a less physical role. I'd be a lot less gym. I'm not big on the gym. I have to be though, but uh, I wouldn't mind like a period piece or whatnot. I might get it out there. Yeah. <laughs> I got to ask you qu quickly about your parents in the film that Josh Lawson and Anna Paquin. I mean, I've just been watching their stuff recently too. And they both seem like they're really incredible people. What's it like? They were incredible. They were great to work with, incredibly talented. You know, we had scenes kind of one-on-one -on -one with both of them. And I just had, they were such mentors, you know, I was able to sit down with them and really ask them like how to deal with this crazy industry. I mean, cause Anna was a child actor as well, obviously, but famously yeah. a child actor. Mm -hmm. And I um, was able to kind of ask her how to, you know, transition from being a child to not being a child anymore. And, you know, she has, she's done some amazing things. And it was, it was a great pleasure to work with them. And then also to work with Cliff Curtis, who plays mm -hmm. my mentor. He was lovely. Yeah. I connected with him straight away. We had a great time on set like singing our lines to rehearse it a bit but you know it was I, I'm sorry I'm just kind of reminiscing now I had a really good time okay so everybody is going to be watching Titans or is already watching Titans very 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 excited for True Spirit when it comes out next year on Netflix I'm very very excited for that film I can't wait Thanks. to see it so what have some been some of the things that you've been watching what's been keeping you kind of uh interested lately well, I just watched, obviously, the third season of Sex Education just came yeah. out. That one, obviously. It's a big favourite. Uh, we've also, oh, we just watched Only Murders in the Building mm -hmm. with uh, Steve Martin and um, Martin Short. I yeah. almost forgot if that would be bad. We <laughs> love, I love that, that pair. Always love that pair. So it was great to see them still kicking and making funny stuff. And... Uh, what else have I watched? I've watched heaps. I'm just completely blanking. Oh, I'm watching Money Heist because mm. I wasn't old enough to watch it when it came out originally. So I just kind of was like, oh, yeah, I should watch that. Um, there's, oh, I've been watching so much. I don't know why I'm blanking. That's it. I think that's a good three. I think it's yeah, a good three. I think so too. Gotta <laughs> let you go. I wanted to say before that, I've really, really enjoyed speaking with you, hearing from you. It's been wonderful and you seem like you're somebody who's you know sky is the limit thank you so you're much go great... incredible incredible places so thank you so much for that thanks I really, so really much. appreciate it have a good evening